agency is called the Felipe Encampment, and I've been working with it for six months. Myself and many of the advocates here today have been feeding people here. And, uh, you know, this is one of maybe several hundred encampments. This is maybe the largest since the jungle. But you see that the city's uh, strategy to deal with it is to sweep it out of here. Caltrans is uh, initiating the sweep today. But what we want to see, and I think everybody in San Jose wants to see, is a more permanent solution. Because when these sweeps happen, like you're going to see in a few minutes, it's going to be a lot of chaos. A lot of people are confused and scared. And, uh, you know, San Jose's been doing this since there's been homeless people here. They haven't really found a solution. The numbers met that out. I mean, the numbers of homeless people are 7,600 in the county. The number of people that died last year was 138. I was the first person in the county in 1999, uh, administered through the mayor's task force, Ron Gonzalez, to keep numbers. The number in 1999 was 33. So San Jose keeps touting their strategies to deal with the homeless. The reality is behind me. I mean, this is the camp. There are people in here that are susceptible to dying, especially with the flu epidemic and the cold weather. And if the, if the city says they're doing such a good job, then why are the numbers of homeless people up so high? Because the numbers are at a, at a record, and San Jose keeps talking about, we want to build tiny homes, maybe 40 in, three, in two years. I mean, in two years, 45 people will have died on the street. So the city is not keeping up with the demand. The demand is huge, and it's like a natural disaster. If you go into camp with me, you're going to see that this camp grew in six months from about 20 people to almost 100. And the people living in tents and squalor, we give them tarps, and we give them tents, and we give them blankets. We try to keep the people alive. But San Jose is saying, oh, we've got this strategy. Well, it's not working. And we know the city is well-meaning, but in reality, you know, the numbers speak. The numbers are factual. And the, the facts are that in all the Bay Area cities, because of the cost of housing, homelessness continues to grow. People continue to die on the streets. And so we want to see them treat this like a natural disaster. You know, in a natural disaster, FEMA would come in here and set up a legal encampment where people would have access to clean water and the things that they need. The people here are struggling with the advocates to get the basic necessities of life. So, you know, San Jose can talk, Caltrans can talk, and all the agencies involved, we know they're well-meaning people, but this is Silicon Valley. We need a realistic strategy. I don't see a strategy. I've been here 25 years working on the streets, the strategy that they're implementing is to continue to sweep and use taxpayer money to move the homeless from one neighborhood to another, then every neighborhood complains to the city government and they keep the cycle going. We need to stop the cycle, we need to get housing, we need to get some interim solutions, we need legal encampments and buildings open, and that's just logic. I mean, people here are houseless. You can call them homeless, but they're houseless. They need structures to live in to keep themselves alive. And this is an epidemic now in the Bay Area, and everybody saw it coming because the, the cost of living here is the highest in the nation. And somebody says, well, do people want to be homeless? People want to live on the street? Some reporter interviewed a woman. She said, no, I would love to have a place to go. Wouldn't we all want a place to go if it was available? So it's not a fair question unless you have a place for them to go. Because everybody says, well, the homeless want to be homeless. Does anyone really want to live in this encampment under 280 or 101? I don't think so. So. We're here today, we're not here to vilify the city or Google. We just think, you know, this is the richest place, one of the richest places in the world. And you've got people living like this. I mean, it's just unexplainable and unacceptable if you look at it from the outside. You know, we can do a lot better than this. And the advocates here, you know, giving their lives to try to help people survive. And people shouldn't have to struggle to survive in Silicon Valley. Some uh, ambassador from the United Nations visited the Bay Area it said homelessness here was basically cruel and unusual punishment because in other cities like Calcutta or Mexico City or around the world, you know, they don't have the resources we have. Here. And the people there don't have to be on the run constantly. The people in this camp came over from another camp where they built a $300,000 wall. That was their solution. The neighbors came to the politicians and said, we want a wall built. So San Jose is supposed to be a sanctuary city. There's no sanctuary for the poor here. The poor are dying, and there's no place for them to go, and they're going to move from here. They're going to go a few blocks away. Oh, my name is Scott Wachers. Uh, 
W-H-E-R-S. And what's the, what's, what's the church? The church? Oh, it's called CHEM. CHEM Ministry. CHEM Ministry. You all have any questions? We've got CHEM Ministry. Uh, C-H-A-M Ministry. Okay. we got some other... So if you, you guys got any questions? So I'd like to say something if it's okay, if you don't mind. I'm sure. sorry, Sam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One thing that we've been doing here um, at this encampment, we've been working with State Senator, I've been working with State Senator Jim Bell to stop the sweeps. We have had it stopped twice, but the thing is, this is um, state property, okay? So what we've been doing, what I've been doing is trying to work with Jim Bell and um, Oshkara to get this, we need to get this land um, leased. The city can come in and lease this land or the county. I have copies here. Every week, what they do is 15 to 21, 24 sweeps a week. This is what they do, the money they spend on sweeps. Each sweep is over $10,000. It's a waste of our money. So all of our friends here at Felipe are gonna be leaving. This is going to take a week or week and a half to sweep and clean up, and then they're going to come back. What I'm asking for and talking with them about is somehow getting it to be a legal encampment. This is our goal, is to have this land, this property, to become a legal encampment. So, um, I mean, this is ridiculous, like Scott said, to keep coming in, sweeping the homeless, they go across the street and they come back. That's all. Thank you. Tomorrow, many of us will be going to uh, the Board of Supervisors during public comment. It'll be a lot of people from the Mountain View Shelter, the Sunnyview, Sunnyvale Shelter, and others to fight to keep Sunnyvale open. Um, the homeless death rate among seniors has gone up 320%. About 50% of the Sunnyvale Shelter are seniors disabled. Um, we also have a lot of families there. There's like a family of nine. There's many large families there and Sunnyvale is slated to close in April. These families will end up here. These families will end up on the street. They will end up back in their cars. So tomorrow at 9 a.m. we're going to the Board of Supervisors to plead to make Sunnyvale a year-round shelter because that's the only way to save people's lives. And the coroner's report proved that people do not die in winter. They die evenly across all seasons. So having Sunnyvale be a winter shelter and having owls only open during seasonal times does not help to prevent deaths. Our death rate has gone up every single year after year after year. What San Jose and the county have been doing is not effective. It just continues to kill people. We need Sunnyvale open year round. Okay, do we have any other speaker? Connor, Jack? Can we get the, let me get, let's get the names real quick. Cause you, Sean, Sean Cartwright, S-H-A-U-N-N-C-A-R-T-W-R-I-G-H-T. And your name? Gail Osmer. Oh, I'm sorry. There you Gail go. Osmer, O S M E R. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't have too much to add. I'm Sandy Perry. I'm uh, the president of the Affordable Housing no, no, Network. No. Uh, I said this when they took apart the jungle, and I'm saying it again today. This is an international disgrace. Uh, we are here in the middle of Silicon Valley. As the tech companies get richer and richer and richer, the people here are getting poorer and poorer and poorer. Uh, Google, Apple, and the other tech companies just received a tax windfall of tens of billions of dollars. That's a B. Tens of billions of dollars. And what do we have happening? We have police agencies called to remove people from place to place where they have no place to go. The city refuses to set aside a designated uh, spot where it's legal for people to camp. The county so far has not done that. The state has not done that. There's no solutions. People are just uh, uh, forced out of here under threat of arrest, and they're forced to move from place to place to place. Uh, we were talking to somebody yesterday. They said they moved over the other side of Story Road. I'm expecting uh, a lot of the people that are living here now are just going to move to the other side of Story Road. And what do you think is going to happen then? Then they're going to have a police action on the other side of Story Road and move everybody back here. What is gain? What sense to this? There's uh, a certain amount of trash here. If Caltrans really wanted to help people, they could provide dumpsters 
so that the trash doesn't get left in piles like this. There's no reason why we have to have trash in piles like this. I mean, in our neighborhoods, where people who have homes, where we live, uh, there's trash pickup every week. There's trash pickup every week. The trash gets picked up and hauled out. And you probably all heard the stories about uh, cities where they have garbage trucks and the trash piles up and how horrible it is. Well, there are no garbage trucks that come here. So the trash piles up and people blame the homeless, but there's no, there's no uh, uh, service or anything available for the trash to be hauled away. So uh, no that if, if there's no water, no water, people have no water, no toilets, no sanitary facilities, no showers, no hand washing stations. People in, all around California are worried about a hepatitis A outbreak. Well, the hepatitis A comes from not having hand washing and bathing facilities and bathrooms. There's no reason. This is this is the richest country in the world. There's no reason why we can't have basic facilities for basic human beings to carry out their human functions. This, it, it just makes no sense at all. This is, uh, as a simple, Google, Google net profits in 2016, 19 and a half billion dollars. Google overseas cash on hand, 48 billion. Google uh, overall value, 498 billion. And here we have 7,394 homeless in Google's hometown right here. And they say they don't have, uh, the mayor has said that Google has no responsibility for social problems in San Jose, and yet they want to come and buy our property and build a, a big campus, but they don't want to help us with the problems that we have. And actually, Google, Apple, the other tech companies have played a big role in, in creating the homelessness that we have here, because what they do is they bring in jobs and they take no responsibility for the housing crisis that that creates. We've had hundreds of thousands of jobs added in the Bay Area in recent years, and, uh, and very little housing has been built. Why? Because our elected officials don't hold the tech companies accountable for uh, building the housing that their employees need. So the tech employees come in, most of them from out of the area, most of them are not from here, they come in, <coughs> they have relatively high salaries, and so the people who are uh, living here already, they get pushed down and out. They're either in Modesto, Merced, Fresno, Manteca, and you can name all those other cities out there on the edges of the Bay Area, and they're commuting two hours each way to come in and out of the Bay Area, or they're living here. That's what happens when tech comes into, a, into a, an area and takes no responsibility. So uh, I'd like to give other people an opportunity to speak. We've got a lot of different community advocates here. Uh, is there any volunteers? Any people who want to be Catholic worker? Pressure. My name's Andrew Lanier. I'm with the San Jose Catholic Worker. I think just to add on what Sandy said, you know, we have to take responsibility for our own community and spend our resources in a proactive way. Sweeps are a reactionary thing. They don't take a step forward. Uh, we have to do things that actually help people assist them, give them the opportunities that they need to get back into stable housing. Can you state your name? Andrew Lanier, L-A-N-I-E-R. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't ready to speak, but uh, somehow the city, the Catrans, our police department, they think it is fine to take people's blanket away. They think it is fine to take people's tents away. So this is, and use our tax money, our resources, to attack the most vulnerable, the more poor people in San Jose. That's not acceptable. That's something that we should not allow to use our tax money to go against people, against poor, against the homeless. We need to find a permanent solution for this, and moving or pushing people around from one location to another location is not a solution. We need to find a permanent solution, and right now, a lot, 125 people last, died last year because they don't have housing, 
they don't they didn't have a place where to sleep. So we need to stop that first. We need to find a solution. We need to give them uh, an opportunity to have a house. We need to work with the homeless advocate to make sure they bring the resources to them and make sure this, these people have a, a place where to stay, where to live, and not to use our money to just kick them around from one place to another place. That's not the right thing to do. This is not how we approach the solution. This is only making a, a, using our, our resources in a way that is not smart. So thank you everybody for coming and thank you for supporting the most vulnerable people in San Jose. Okay, I think what we're gonna do, uh, a lot of people are still in their tents, they're being rousted out right now, is uh, we're gonna uh, wait until people are out and about and then maybe gather again, maybe possibly further down this way, uh, when uh, more of the uh, people, the residents that are living here uh, will be ready to speak. But we wanted to come early because we wanted to get a jump on. We understood that the Caltrans was going to be here early. So we wanted to get here early so that we could uh, be available. And, uh, but uh, that's all we're going to say right now. Mm -hmm.